Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, check out this video by Dave Ramsey. Three things happen with home ownership that make you want to do it as a long-term play versus renting your whole life. Number one, rents go up every year. More and more and more of your money is going to go out the door for housing. And if you buy a home and you lock down your payment, your rent doesn't go up anymore. Number two, the value of the house goes up. And when you, own, when you rent, obviously you don't own anything that's going up. Number three, it's a great wealth building tool. It stabilizes the largest line item in your budget, which is housing. All right, Kirby. I know you want to jump into it. <laughs> you want me to start this one or? Yeah, I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you go. I think. I think we we might be on the same page. We could be on different pages on this one. But go ahead. What you got? Yeah. So the first one he said, I disagree with. Um, yeah, rent goes up. Um, your fixed principal and interest doesn't go up. The property taxes and insurance, which is your escrow, goes up. And as we've seen for the over the past, I would say probably four or five years, property taxes and insurance in not all states, but some states such as Florida, um, Texas, New York, California, these these have risen heavily. And if you're a homeowner, you get hit with that. And in some cases, it probably goes up higher than your rent being raised. Um, I know, Kirby, you mentioned, you know, someone that lives in the Texas area that they built a home and then their property taxes were one thing and then it went all the way to eleven thousand dollars a year which is essentially almost a thousand dollars per month increase in their mortgage payment so these are things that are actively increasing i think that's a big lie that people say that oh you're once you buy a house you're on a fixed payment and i mean that's that's something i thought too when i bought my first house i thought that you lock in your monthly payment that's what you pay for the rest of your life and the reality is the hidden fees the escrow those will constantly go up every single year it's not like it's not like renting from a mom and pop landlord where they're like oh this year it doesn't go up we'll, we'll tack it on later like the government wants their money insurance companies want their money yeah um as far as dave ramsey is saying i Dave Ramsey knows better. I think he's being disingenuous when he say this. I, when he made the statement, um, I think, and I'm saying that he knows better is because Dave Ramsey's own homes, both finance and paid cash. He owns rental properties. Um, when a debate comes of owning versus renting, it's just a matter of which one loses the most money. You both you lose both ways, but which one is losing the most money? So, Alex, as you said, when you rent a home, the rent goes up usually every month. I mean, now if you get some places in, you know, south southeast of the United States, you get a mom pop landlord, they just let you pay the same thing for the next 15, 16 years. That's rare. But the cost of owning a home goes up every year. Alex, you already talked about how the insurance and property taxes go up. But there's more. When you're renting, you don't have to worry about the maintenance costs. The cost of maintenance go up on a house every year. So when you own a home, just for the people that don't know, if you live in some place like, let's say, a Florida or something like that, you have to replace your roof every 15, 15 to 18 years. Just for a normal size house, let's say 15 to 1,600 square feet, when I put a roof on my house, I paid 10000 Now for my rental properties, the size is about the same, a little bit bigger. Now I'm paying seventeen dollars to 18000 So, So if you just add that, if you just add that part up, I mean, the cost of maintenance, hot water tanks, to change a hot water tank, it used to cost like $600 to change a hot water tank. Now it's about $1,400 to get a hot water tank changed. So the cost of maintenance go up also. So the cost of living does increase on both sides. And people always get upset and say, oh, well, it's an investment. Yeah, it's just, it's an investment. You will save money that you wouldn't save anywhere else because most people don't have the, the dedication and discipline to save money, but the costs are there. Only thing you gotta do is run the numbers. If you buy a house for $100,000, 
or you buy well I, i'm not going to use the hundred thousand dollar metric because that's what everybody uses so if you buy a house for two hundred fifty thousand dollars and you're making a mortgage payment on there every year and then you sell it for fifty thousand dollars more let's say six six to eight years from now how much money did you make people gonna say oh you made fifty thousand dollars no you didn't because when because this is what most people don't do they don't add the lawn care lawn care costs between i mean if you're doing it yourself you still got to pay for gas and all that but most people in florida for instance they have a lawn care service that's 100 120 dollars a month right and then all the maintenance that you got fixing cabinets fixing drawers fixing leaks fixing uh hot water tanks fixing acs fixing roofs all this stuff adds up adds up adds up if you just put all the cost that all the stuff that you did upgrades and all that other crap in one bucket and then you add it to the cost that you pay for the house and you sell it for fifty thousand dollars in the future not to include taxes to include insurance put that in the bucket of other expenses you got to pay you really lost money in the whole transaction and then you add in the six percent realtor fees that go along with that then closing costs and all that other jazz to go with the PMI if you're paying that. Buying versus renting is only where do you lose the most money at? When you're renting, you don't have to come up with ten, twelve, fifteen thousand dollars to repair a roof, to fix a hot water tank, to fix an AC unit. When you're renting, you're just gonna pay whatever the rent is. But when you own, you still gonna have to pay that mortgage. It don't matter if the hot water goes out, the roof caves in, or anything. That mortgage is still due on the first of every month. Plus, you got to come up with the big nut lump sum to pay for these things. Most people put them on a the credit card and then pay it off, you know, over time. But those are big, big number items that come across being a homeowner. Renters don't have to deal with it. And that's the part that everybody want to leave out because we've been taught this whole American dream thing that, oh, you should buy a house. Yeah, the American dream, the only people that make money on the American dream are investors and banks. The homeowner that lives in it is not making no money in this game. Yeah. Yeah, it's you said it before too. You had said pick your liability. Do you want to rent or do you want to own? And I think you mentioned that in the class that you hold, but you know, that was that's a good way to put it. I mean, do you want to own a home or do you want to rent? Either way, you're going to be spending. It's a liability on either end. It's a monthly ob obligation, it's an expense. Um, home ownership shouldn't, I don't think it should be looked at as an investment. Um, the only, you know, I would say I, I prefer home ownership in the sense that you get to control more aspects of it. If there is a water leak from the roof, you know, you can fix it on time rather than waiting on the landlord. Hopefully you have a good landlord. You know, it's like it all balances out. Hopefully if you're renting, you have a good landlord, you're in a good area. If you own, hopefully your house doesn't need a lot of maintenance, but it's like there, it's headaches on either end. So, I mean, that's that's how I view the comparison between the two. Um, going, going to that statement that you just said, if you have a good landlord and he fixes the leak, the difference between a good landlord and a bad landlord, if the landlord has capital to fix the leak, if they don't have the capital, the leak ain't going to fix. That's the same thing as a homeowner. Most homeowners... Like they did the survey, 60% of 60 to 75% of Americans can't even afford a thousand dollar emergency. A roof is going to cost you more than a thousand dollars. So even if you bought a house and you can't afford to fix the roof, you're still going to be getting leaked on. <laughs> so that's the truth of it. If I mean, most people don't, they can't afford a thousand dollar emergency. Just think of how much stuff costs for these homes that people will buy when it, when a maintenance bill come. I mean, just think of the maintenance bills you get for your rental properties. Most people can't afford those maintenance bills. That's why landlords don't don't pay for it because they can't afford it. And most homeowners can't afford it either. And then that's why properties go in the dumps because they got a patchwork. Hopefully they can find a friend of a friend that can do some makeshift shiny work to just uh, last a little bit longer, but then it deteriorates further, deteriorates further because they don't have the capital. So, I mean, it's damned if you do either way. If you don't have the capital, if your landlord don't have the capital, you're still in the same situation. Of It's really nothing you control if you don't have the capital to control it. So, I mean, me, when it came to renting versus owner, I've done both. 
uh, I, own a, I own a house and the only thing I see is money flying out the door. Flying out the door for maintenance, flying out the door for, oh, let's do this upgrade. Just money flying out the door. Cause I'm not about to upgrade it and sell it. I'm about to upgrade and use it. And then the value of those upgrades go down with it. But I can say, oh, I got granite now. Oh, what to do? It still holds the same pots, the same pans that for my did. You see what I'm saying? So it's it's really it's really about which one where you're going to lose the least amount of money, but you're going to lose in both cases if you actually do the math on. Right. Yeah, and when he's when he mentioned equity, like it's not like your house goes up in value like fifty grand a year. Most houses they go up what three percent a year, so three to five. Mm -hmm. yeah three to five so that's the common amount so if you are in a house that needs and requires a lot of maintenance and you're paying that out of pocket and then you have your mortgage and then your insurance and taxes are increased every year then that equity maybe breaks even maybe not you're probably losing money so i mean it's not like every state had a Florida anomaly like we saw during COVID where houses went from, you know, 200 to $400,000 in a year. Like that yeah. it, in that scenario, if you just bought a house for 200 grand and then the following year it doubles. Okay. Yeah. If you sold, then I guess you, you were one of the lucky ones, but that's not common. That doesn't happen with the majority of houses in America. And, you know, and then, so, but the other thing, too, is like if you decide to stay in those homes, if you decide to stay in your home that just doubled in value because of some rare anomaly, now your taxes have gone up and your insurance has gone up, which is what Floridians are saying right now. One thing that being said, and of course, y'all know on this channel, we're big Dave Ramsey fans. I mean, I know he's preaching this book when he's saying this and and the reason why they talk about equity so much is because he knows that people don't have the discipline enough to save. Um, so if just doing apples to apples, if you rent a thousand dollars a month, or if you rent a place for 10 years or 20 years versus buying a house, and then at the end of that 20 years, how much is your net worth? Your net worth will be higher in the house because you have that quote unquote equity in there because you, you was forced to save. That's what it is. But if you're a renter and then as if you're a renter and then the money that you you could put into a mutual fund or something like that or investments that's going to give you a 10 percent increase, it will be higher than the equity that you have in a house that's only giving you three to five percent uh, increase in equity a year. But in both scenarios, you're losing money. So that's why we always talk about buying a house living is a liability and renting is a liability also. So again, liabilities is things that take money out of your pocket. Assets are things that put money in your pocket. It don't matter how you want to derive it, change it, screw it up, make it look, you know, fancy and funny. But that's what assets and liabilities are, and both are liabilities. With all that being said, we'll see you in the next video. I know we ran a little long today, but it was a topic that we we're passionate about. So yeah, have a good one. See you guys.